everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about unexpected out-of-season feather loss and what to do about it and the different approaches and thinking on this subject. But before we do, if you haven't already, if you could please hit subscribe, it really does help me keep this channel up and going. And with that said, uh, feathers. Feathers are highly... Uh, specialized scales. In fact, uh, genetically speaking, geneticists have figured out with studies on chickens which gene sequence it is that makes a feather be a scale or a feather be a feather. You probably looked at the legs of a falconry bird, red-tailed hawk, whatever, something. You're looking at these scales that go all the way down the feet, just like a lizard, just like a dinosaur. And then there's feathers everywhere else. Uh, but you also may have noticed that some birds take a golden eagle, for example. The feathers go down the legs, and there are scales on the bottom. But where there are scales on a red tail on that golden eagle, there's feathers. They've just been repurposed. And uh, with chickens geneticists have isolated and found out which it is and we even know how to switch a chicken to be completely covered with scales or completely covered with feathers. Uh, genetics are quite an interesting field of study in what we find out. So feathers themselves, highly advanced scales that have been repurposed for flight and for warmth and all these different things. So knowing that feathers are not random. If you're not familiar with birds, it's easy to misunderstand that. Cartoons always show every time a bird takes off, feathers just fly everywhere, which is not the case. Molting happens in a very specific way. Molting is when a bird loses their feathers and grows in a new set. Now, uh, as a falconer, my birds are, you know, northern hemispheric and we you know the cycles of the sun with where we're at typically that happens in the summer and so what happens is in the summertime it's warm here uh i know in the other hemisphere it's the opposite uh, but it's warm so you're not burning as many calories to stay warm yourself and prey availability goes up prey isn't buried under the snow prey is having offspring and so there's a proliferation of food available that is a good time of year to be like hey i need extra uh nutrition to be able to, and extra protein to be able to grow new feathers do it in the summer so normally raptors will have first year colors and then they go through a year of life and then once they hit a year old their first summer uh as having survived a year they get adult feathers. They molt in their adult colors. And then the next year, they'll get a new set of identical adult colors, identical adult colors. With larger birds like condors, vultures, eagles, that process will have five or six phases. So like take a bald eagle, for example. Bald eagle, its first year of life is basically all chocolate black from head to toe. And then they have they get a new set every year until about five or six years old they have that iconic white head and neck and white tail with the lighter brown body and wings uh, but the the principle is the same at a certain time of year birds get new feathers now there are some birds who even have special breeding plumage where they have their coloration and then at an odd time of year they suddenly have a partial molt to get fancier colors for display but it's still done in a timely and specific way. This is why most falconers do not fly their birds in the summer. Most of us here in my area, we fly in the fall and winter, which coincides also with our hunting seasons. And then come uh, late spring, we're like, okay, fatten up your bird and let them grow new feathers. Now those feathers have a specific order that they leave in. Feathers are not random, particularly tail feathers and wing feathers have a specific number. It's an even number and a specific order in which they molt. So maybe some species molt these two tail feathers, they start growing in, then these two, then these two, and it just goes through that whole deck of feathers, uh, two at a time. Okay, like a conveyor belt. Now with some birds in captivity, I've talked about this in other videos, like I have a great horned owl that because I feed a, a nutrient rich diet, instead of a slow process taking months and months and months and months like in the wild, her body's like hits a time of year and she's like, well, time to molt. And her whole tail drops within a, like a day and a half, two days and starts growing in all together. Now it's still sequential that they fall out in, but instead of this happening over a couple of months, they start to fall out in an order of a couple days and grow in. Again, that's the body's response to uh, more nutrition, more protein, more vitamins being as part of the diet. But it's still the proper time of year. That can also be reversed. If you go through my videos on my falconry playlist, you'll see I have a video about doing reverse molts, where if, for example, for wildlife education, if you're doing a summertime flighted show and you want all of your birds keyed in, dialed in, and not having to grow new feathers that might get damaged, 
um, during those flights, you can put plant grow lights on them in the winter so their body thinks it's summer in the winter and they're like, oh, okay, give them, you know, feed them up, have those lights on them and whoop, they do a reverse molt. But again, there's a natural order to things that is understandable, measurable, and predictable. So what happens when that gets thrown off in an unexpected way? If you follow my channel, you know I have been flying a very small male, a tersel, a male uh, lantern falcon named Khufu. He's been a really fun bird, and part of my goal with him was to get him to be eventually the world's greatest chucker partridge hunter. Chucker partridge are a prey species that's been introduced where I live, locally in Utah. You go way out into the deserts in these rocky outcrops, and I know where a lot of coveys of partridge are. And a lantern falcon, in my mind, is perfectly suited for this because lanterns can do a traditional flight, long wing flight, circling way up, wading on above you, and diving down when you flush break and hitting it. Or they can charge straight up the fist like a goshawk or a Harris hawk, and everything in between. Uh, I've had a lot of fun in years past using lantern falcons in this way. So to do this this year, I was starting him on pigeons and letting him chase pigeons straight off the fist, which is very athletic. He's at a disadvantage. It builds the muscle. And in the process, as a young bird trying to do, 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 figure things out, he had a run in with Canadian goose. Uh, a Canadian goose is a very large bird, very aggressive bird, and not one that a little lantern falcon is going to fare well against. So didn't intentionally let him go after it. He was chasing pigeons and decided to go jump in the fray on that. And in the process, uh, he fortunately learned really quick, whoa, that was a mistake. But in the process, I don't know if the goose stepped on his tail or bit a tail feather, but a tail feather got yanked out. So I've got a first-year bird with first-year colors in the middle of the fall-winter hunting season when they're not growing feathers in. So this is a time of year that I'm treating a bird like an athlete. I'm cutting the weight down and then building the muscle up and so there's not protein to spare. All the protein is going towards staying warm and toward athletic flights. That's very different than just sitting on your on your tail being like, I'm just going to grow new feathers in at summertime. Very different situation. So here's the dilemma that happens. So now you've got a full tail and suddenly it's missing a feather. And I, I'm like, oh no, one of two things happens. In this situation, either the body says, well, I'm waiting until summer, and once summer hits and I have that extra protein and I can sense that extra protein, I'm going to start growing that one in as well as all the rest. Or the feather says, well, I, I guess I'm the early bird on this tail. It's unexpected, but it's time for me to grow in right now, even though I don't have the protein and energy and nutrition to spare to put this feather in. This makes for a dangerous situation. I, I know that's like dangerous. I guess I'm being overly dramatic, but ADHD, that's what you get. You're always getting overly dramatic with me and you know that. What you have here is a well, weighing out of the good and the bad. So what bird are you flying? Well, I'm flying a falcon. Wh what do falcon feathers do? Falcon feathers are very stiff and comparatively brittle compared to say hawks and eagles. Uh, how much do they rely on their tail? Very much so. Tail feathers go through a lot of strain, a lot of stress during flight. Um, if the feather doesn't grow in perfectly, is it at risk of breaking? Yes, yes it is. Okay, so you have a judgment call, or in this case, I had a judgment call I had to make. Number one, I could just keep flying my bird and say, oh, I'm just gonna keep flying them and that feather might come in. Because every day, whatever they're eating, whatever they're feeding, um, that feather grows a little more, grows a little more, grows a little more. And I don't want it to have what we call fret marks. Fret marks usually appear if a bird's sick, but even more if there's a a difference in their diet. Let's say they have several days of good food and then they have a day where they miss a meal in the wild, right? Or they have maybe, you know, whatever happens. Something happens on that day, they didn't get enough water. And you will see these lines of weakness on the feather shaft that make the feather very breakable. Now for me personally, falcon flying, the way I fly my falcons, it does, it, there's a lot of stress, natural stresses of flight, but I didn't want that feather to break. So I made the decision to fatten him up for the few weeks while he's growing that feather in. Now it's interesting because it is his adult feather. 
So on that tail, you're having this all these baby feathers and then that adult feather is starting to come in. And as you can see, it looks very different than the rest. Now what'll happen, what should happen now is that it's about grown in is I will cut them back down, finish off the season with some hopefully some good flying and some good hunting. I, I'm gonna be out of season now to hunt partridge, so it's just gonna be back to the pigeons. But then hopefully then when I hit next fall, I just hit the ground running and go after partridge. But what'll either happen is that feather on its own should come in and then all the rest should come in in their natural order. Sometimes if this had have happened earlier, like saying August or September of last year, instead of, you know, this time of year, then what'll happen is, is it will fall out as the others come in as well in the natural order and for the rest of this bird's life technically one feather will always be one year ahead one molt ahead which is doesn't impact the bird at all because you're back to the normal cycle now this is my decision with my falcon that i want to have a good tail coming in properly but that's not always the right answer uh i've had this happen with harris hawk and when it happened to her years ago, then I saw it start to come in and I'm like, you know what? The weight management on a Harris Hawk is nowhere near as tight as it is on a Falcon. Uh, it's kind of, eh, so I'm like, okay, I bumped it up to a higher level that I'm like, we can still fly at this higher flight and I'm going to keep her indoors at night so she's not burning through calories as quickly so her body can dedicate that nutrition more towards growing in that new feather. And she did. And then for the rest of her life, that tail feather was a year ahead, but she just kept molting them out just fine. Uh, I, for me personally, my recommendation to you is if you are flying an eagle, especially Aquila eagles, like a golden eagle, wedge-tailed eagle, Varroa's eagle, or Harris hawks, personally, if a feather gets ripped out for any unexpected reason in the middle of the hunting season, I'm like, meh, I'm just going to keep flying through. I don't, I don't worry about it. If I'm dealing with occipiters, like a, like a goshawk, cooper's hawk, sharp shinned hawk, one of those, or, you know, sparrow hawk, or if I'm flying a big falcon, I wouldn't do that with a kestrel, but a big falcon, if a feather gets pulled, then I do uh, fatten them up and let them grow that feather, and if it started to grow in on its own, I'm like, okay, all right, all right, let it grow in, make sure it's safe, and then cut them back down. That's me personally. There's different ideas based off of this, but this is an odd, sort of an odd, uh, scenario doesn't happen very often it's very rare it's more likely for a feather to break than for it to somehow get pulled out and because it's so rare i thought it would be worthy to share now i know all over the world people have different experiences my experiences are entirely centered in the northern hemisphere could be different elsewhere depending on your lighting and and the perspective how close you are to the equator and how what time of year birds in your area molt so please if you have experience in this please share with us in the comments what your experiences your perspectives and your recommendations are in your area and i hope you enjoyed this video if you haven't already please hit subscribe and as always happy hawking <laughs>